Hey madame, viens t'en dans mon auto, on va aller faire un tour dans mon abri tempo. Hey madame, viens t'en dans mon auto, on va aller faire un tour dans mon abri tempo. Hello everyone and welcome to Cheap Noise in the house, which is where we talk about electronic games and music production. I'm Cheap Noise and survey says, I'm in the house. And today we have a bit of a review for this game here called Max Backtalk. This was released in 1986 by Milton Bradley, uh, the same people who made Simon. And this is pretty similar to Simon. Now, I have to say, I talked about this game before in uh, my Recording Made Easy, or Recording Made Fun, I don't even know what the name of that video was. Uh, anyway, I talked about this and the Puppet Maker in one video, but I wanted to do this as a separate video, uh, just for people who want to know more about this game, and uh, they don't have to look to other things to get more information about this. So, uh, this is the game unit itself. Uh, it has four quite satisfying buttons. Underneath these buttons are bulbs, so uh, LEDs were not that uh, good, and blue LEDs didn't exist back then, so um, they needed to use bulbs. And uh, I haven't taken this apart, but uh, I, guess, I think the bulbs are replaceable, because uh, the bulbs in the Simon that uh, came out in the same time were. Uh, now you have this giant speaker, or this big speaker here, we have this label here. And over here we have some controls. We have the on and off switch, and then here we have a microphone, more on that later. And here we have a reset game button. On the back, we have some writing. We also have some feet there. And we have the battery compartment that stores the four C cells. Yes, this thing takes four C cell batteries. I'm gonna put this aside and we'll take a look at the box. Cause yes, I got this mint, but I also got it with the box. Now the box looks like this. Here's the side, I'll show you a bit, there you go. If we open it up, we can see the game is neatly packed in this uh, foam box here. We remove that paper, and as you can see, here's the game, uh, or where the game is packed. And here are the instruction manuals, it even came with the instructions. So you can see here all of the instructions. So yeah, that's the box. And one jump cut later, we're back to the game unit. So as I said before, this is pretty similar to Simon. Uh, you have a memory game that's pretty much Simon, except in this game, you can record your own voice and your own sounds and assign these sounds to each of the four buttons, as I'm going to show you later. So this has two games. Uh, it has a Simon game, as previously mentioned. Basically, you're trying to repeat as many sequences as possible. Every time you repeat a sequence, it gets longer, a bit like uh, the classic game of Simon, except now, you have your own voice sounds. And if I remember correctly, uh, the Simon game, you need to base it only on the sounds. So they don't light up while they're showing the sequence and they only light up when you do the sequence correctly. So that's one thing. And then the other game is kind of similar to Bop It in a way, although not quite. Basically you have uh, up to four players can play. Each player uh, takes a button and uh, a player will uh, have a sound assigned to their button and you need to press that button when the sound and the light matches. So let's say that this sound has, I don't, uh, this button has, I don't know, hello assigned to it. So every time it says hello and this flashes, you need to press it. If it says hello and flashes somewhere else, you don't hit it. If this flashes and it doesn't say hello, you don't hit it. So it's a bit like light bop of the bop and blast if you know how this play, uh, how it plays. So I'm gonna turn it on. Uh, it's pretty easy to record your own sound. It will do the process by itself. So it will do a couple of beeps and then uh, it will flash the sound of which it will be assigned to. So, one, two, three, four. There we go. So now you can hear these sounds. I'm not, I'm not really creative, but uh, you can hear these sounds by pressing the yellow button. and you can hear the one, two, three, four. This game actually records for a very long amount of time, especially for 1986, uh, and the quality is not that bad either. Uh, now it prompts me to select a game, so I have the blue game or the red game. I'm gonna start with Simon, which is the blue game. Lovely analog oscillator there. Three, one, four. 
Because you can see it doesn't show the lights, it only plays the sound. So you need to remember three is there, one is there, and four is there. The sequence doesn't get faster, it just gets longer. Three, one, four, two, three. Three, one, four, two, three, one. Oh, and also, these buttons, uh, if you press three, them too fast, they won't register. One, four, so that's, uh, the, two, that's another thing. Three, There you go. Three, one, four, two, three, one, three, four. I'm gonna mess up. Nice tune. Three, one, and then it shows you four, the pattern two, and your score. Three, one, three. So pretty fun. You can also hear your last game or your last score by pressing the green button. And it will just repeat the last sequence. Now to go back uh, to get, go back to the main menu, you just hit this button. It makes some clicky sounds. And then you can uh, select another game. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to be more creative with the sound that I record. Uh, what's cool about this microphone is you can record pretty much everything. Uh, it automat automatically sets the level so you can record synthesizers in my case or musical instruments or pretty much anything. So, yeah! Uh-huh! All right! Here we go! I'm, I don't know. Let's, let's listen yeah. to that masterpiece. All right, let's play. <laughs> oh my god, let's play the red game. Now it uh, lets me choose how many players I want. You can't select one player, so I'm going to choose two player. Although I'm going to play just myself, and it shows these lights uh, or these players. So every time it go. says, we go. Uh huh, uh huh, uh -huh. and flashes, oh, I need to. Hit. Okay, and the game is finally done. <laughs> it gets pretty noisy. So it just says the red player has no points. And I'm just going to count the score of the blue player, which is the one I was playing as. And the game is over. And as before... Yeah. Okay, as before, <laughs> you can repeat uh, your last score by pressing the green button. And then it goes back to the main menu. Now, one thing I figured out is uh, you can basically test the audio recording in this thing, as well as all the buttons and the bulbs, uh, with a test mode, uh, so to speak. So to access it, you just press a button while turning it on. And now it will allow me to record some uh, audio for about six seconds, I believe. And uh, there we go. And now it will allow me to record some uh, audio for about six seconds, I believe. And uh, there you go. And uh, not only can you do that, oh, and it will come back to the game after, you can also test all the bulbs. So you can turn this on, and you can see that all the bulbs are lighting up and all the buttons are working, which is cool.
And that was it for Max Back Talk. Pretty simple game, pretty fun still, and of course pretty old, obviously. But would I recommend a Max Back Talk to everyone? No. <laughs> for the simple reason that these things come from 86, so it's almost 40 years old, and uh, you'll see some dead capacitors maybe, or dead circuits from this age. And although these are really well made and the construction is really nice, still, uh, it's a bit risky to get one in used state. Of course, you can get one in an original box, but they might cost a bit more. So if you have the money or the chance to play with one, maybe, but uh, still, I wouldn't recommend it. But that's it for this video, so until next time, cheers! <laughs>